Hello, the founder at this middle one for the Google.ai, and this talk is about uh, creating a chatbot for for farmers. And uh, to do that, we've partnered with two other uh, folks that work in the uh, on the on ground stuff with farmers for like the past ten years. So one is Digital Green, who who are funded by the uh, by the Gates Foundation and IPRD Solutions work in, in the healthcare side of things, not the pharma side of things. Um, so the first thing that comes up is, I mean, that, that anyone that you tell that you're building a farmer or chatbot is like, farmers will use chatbots, like, and that's so weird. Like, do farmers even exist in our, uh, in sort of this tier one mind space that we are all, that we all live in. So just to get that point home, this is, uh, this is one of the slides from uh, Digital Green and uh, over the years, they've basically uh, worked with farmers, uh, with call centers, and with extension agents that work in the field to create uh, videos for farmers to help them uh, grow better crop, to to mitigate risks in terms of like economic risks with pesticides. Uh, and so they've they've worked with basically four million farmers till date, and uh, uh, and and, and increase their revenue by seventeen percent. Right. So it, I mean. Uh, the the idea that uh, the digital space can go into these uh, uh, into the very uh, very bottom of society and help help them uh, uh, use it in a uh, in a uplifting way is sort of yeah it's it's becoming a reality and so our vision is that built all of these uh, all of these videos all of these on ground stuff has always been person to person like a farmer would uh, like an extension agent would visit the farmer and 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 the farmer would say, "Which which village are you from? Which other farmers did you work uh, work with?" And then there's this uh, this human conversation that has to happen before they accept this uh, this whole new digital ecosystem into their life. So what we are uh, envisioning is that what if we take all of this information that they've uh, that they've collected over time, over years, made videos. Uh, the Ministry of Agriculture has uh, has uh, published a lot of documents as well. And what if we present them uh, in a WhatsApp chatbot uh, in a in a regional language in a way that that farmers can interact with? And so uh, I'll just get into the demo of uh, of this chatbot, which is a WhatsApp chatbot. This is our landing page, and uh, if you click on the English chatbot, you uh, you get the English chatbot. And this is a very simple question of uh, what happens if you have white fly in your chili crop, and if you send that over. It has read the message. It's saying a blue tick now. And so, uh, I, can, I don't know if I can play this, but it doesn't seem to play. But it basically does uh, speech as well of the same message and also gives you a video that is a video produced by the Ministry of Agriculture um, so that basically the farmer can watch that is in Indic languages. Uh, we have a similar bot for Hindi. So you can, uh, if you ask the same question in Hindi, it gives a similar response back in Hindi. Yeah, you, um, that's the Hindi one. And the other uh, interesting thing is that you can al I'll also send it a voice note. So I'll send the English for a voice note in Hindi about uh, uh, about farming in Mars. So that is a question that's out of context. And uh, that's one of the, the I just want to showcase one of the prompt engineering that has gone into so, so that it doesn't just say anything uh, that it wants to. So I'll ask, Mars uh, pe mirchi kaise ho gaya? Mars pe mirchi kaise ho gaya? And so it first gives you like a transcription just so you know that it read, uh, understood it right. 
then just say, no, I can't answer that because I don't know how to crochetly on Mars. Uh, yeah, so that was the short demo. And And then this is uh, basically a small overview of how it works. Uh, it's basically taking in all of this. The first step is basically taking in all of the videos from the YouTube channel and their uh, and PDFs that uh, that they've published. Uh, and we uh, take that do a speech recognition. If they are Hindi or Telugu videos, we use a Bhashini uh, AI for Bharat model and do a Google Translate on it to English and then put it inside a vector database. Uh, we also do like a Google Sheet integration just so that the uh, extension workers can first uh, uh, validate that the transcriptions are correct. Um, and then we, once we store it in a vector database, it's really just about taking the doing the WhatsApp integration, doing a transcription and a translation uh, to English because we we just figure out that uh, GPT uh, with Indic languages the performance is just a little bit terrible. So we do an English translation for everything that comes in. And then uh, we get a couple of search results from the vector database, and we just do a, uh, do a very simple summarization of the results, uh, and we translate back to whatever language the user user wants. So it may be Hindi, Telugu, uh, Amharic, whatever, and we reply back as text and audio. So text to speech, we use Google text to speech. Um, and uh, so uh, where's GUI.ai in all this? The GUI.ai platform sort of helps. Uh, Helps you one understand what what this is doing and also tweak it in a in a very uh, very easy fashion. So the the first thing that you see is basically all the links of the documents that went into this bot. So for example, this one is a is, is all the transcriptions of these YouTube videos, and we uh, store the snippets, which are then uh, audited by the trans uh, by the health by the extension agents. Uh, we also have just PDFs from from the Ministry of Agriculture that we fed into that are pre-approved for for release, and so these uh, these PDFs and these like uh, uh, these videos are also very uh, region specific and also crop specific. So this is uh, this is actually just for chili crop. And then you can go into the settings and actually inspect all of the prompts that went in. So this prompt is it's the system prompt basically, and so it uh, it's uh, it. it Sets the tone of the of the bot and what it is uh, talking about, and then you can also set like the the audio output. So you can select like Uber Duck or Google Text to Speech. Select what kind of voice do you want, uh, and then these are the task instructions for the search. So uh, once you get the search results, we uh, we have the system prompt, but also the search results and uh, basically some guidelines on how to use those search results. So we had to do some prompt engineering here, which is. Uh, when you have, once you have when you have to tell the tell it that you only use the search results and if it uh, if the question doesn't correlate with the search results you basically say no I don't want to answer it so which is what we saw in the Mars uh, example uh, and you there's also a very very weird thing with with the new GPT models is that it'll output code all of a sudden for some reason so you say never get advice to search the internet uh, and then the one one other interesting uh, uh, a bit is that you can do a citation of search results. So that basically helps you uh, do this response template. So you can, uh, if you look at the answer here, it has basically these citations at the end and in between. So you know which of the search results is actually pulling it from. So it's possible that uh, a search result might come up with 10 different results, but which one is relevant to the question? We'd let GPT decide that and output that back into the uh, into the results. So, uh, yeah, this one was uh, the site results was also very helpful in getting correct answers. And here you can tweak some of the search search settings, uh, like the uh, like how how big a snippet should be, and uh, you can also tweak the language model here. And yeah, so that's it. And then you can uh, basically inspect for a given query uh, what's the what's the prompt that actually goes into into GP three. So this is the system prompt that you set in the settings, and this is the uh, this is the conversation history. So it preserves conversation history, and you can see the the conversation here that I just uh, uh, you know uh, just five minutes ago made with the bot. So you can see that I asked it about this, and it basically stuff stuffs that into in as the user and assistant pairs. 
and then at the very end for the very last question which was how to prevent micronutrient deficiency we searched through the through all of those pdfs all of those uh, all of those video transcriptions and got back uh, got back these search results which were which were basically three search results from from these three different documents and then at the end of these documents we put in the guidelines and asked it this question and presented this response we do a text to speech on it as well and yeah so that's basically it and then the idea is that you can search tweak this however you want and then finally integrate it into your own whatsapp or facebook bot or maybe even do a web embed because it's available as an api yeah that's it Yes. Sorry. This year, you haven't sent it out to real farmers, but you send it out to extension agents, which are basically which represent farmers. So the idea is, but if you have to first test it out really well. So uh, I don't know if I can show you the document, but basically, uh, like. Uh, Around a, a group of 50 extension agents test it out every day, and then in a Google Sheet store all the responses that it has, and you basically figure out okay for this question why didn't this work? Why didn't this work? And so we're in that phase basically. Where sure, sure. So just wanted to understand what has been the feedback around when you get this feedback, like what is working, what is not working. So right now, the the biggest pain point really is, is to do the videos correctly. So if you notice, uh, the WhatsApp bot returns a video URL, right? And so that video URL is actually fetched from this Google Sheet. Right? So you, uh, if you look at the the prompt that the prompt that we stuck in here. If you include like a title and if you just include like a URL here, what happen, ends up happening is that it'll, it'll change the URL sometimes, it will not include the URL sometimes. So you have to uh, sort of, it's a very, uh, very uh, tough balance. Right? So it's a, and it's also a very uh, conversation based thing. Like if you, if, you, if you look at the document search query, right now all we do is just literally uh, feed in the entire search history as your uh, vector search query. So th then the videos that it returns is sometimes not the one that you would expect uh, when you just have a single single query and uh, answer feedback. So it's really been about the about how the document search works when you have a long running conversation and the videos that get returned are not sometimes, uh, yes, because sometimes they're, they're not so correct. Uh, but otherwise, the, uh, like when you're starting early on, the the problems were that it was it would just uh, it would answer questions that it had no context on. So we just solved that with a little bit of problem engineering. Follow up questions, right? So when do you understand or when do you infer that a previous session has ended and now you? I don't have a solution for it. You just, yeah. you just have to type reset and it just. Reset. Yeah. So you expect user to press. Re, uh, you don't expect it. We're still searching for a solution. You don't expect a farmer to know what reset means. Yes. Okay. Um. So initially you said something like when village uh, farmers need to trust you. So you, you need to have like these conversations like what village you have treated, like how are you doing that here? So the idea is that uh, you already have these relationships between extension agents and farmers. So they trust that if you give them a WhatsApp or they trust them, right? The idea is that then the network effects can play out very easily because if in a village you introduce the farmer, like the chatbot to one person, then the then the trust of like, okay, he's my neighbor, he'll, and if I share the basically the WhatsApp contact, then he'll, he'll, he'll trust that it's uh, it, because it's coming from it's okay. Whereas that network is very, like relatively harder to do in person. Right? Whereas over WhatsApp is a lot easier. Yeah, so I'm asking like it's built on top of GPT 3.5. So it sometimes hallucinates. So how do you solve that problem? Yeah, so uh, I mean, apart from, so we are looking, okay. So one is that we basically told him don't uh, don't veer away from the search results. That's one. It's been pretty fine. 
The other thing that we are trying to do is basically store all the responses in uh, somewhere and then do auditing on it, both human auditing and also GP auditing. In GP auditing, it only takes you so far because hallucinating GPT, uh, evaluating a hallucinating GPT is <laughs> you can't pick that. But yeah, we uh, we basically uh, doing human human evaluation on the responses to figure out if it's if it's uh, hallucinating in some way. But uh, just saying that you know don't uh, don't say anything outside of the search results has been pretty okay. There is one problem where uh, if you if the language in the in the PDF is a little like li little tricky for it to understand, like uh, uh, I have an example at forgot, but basically if you jumble if the the source itself is like very uh, very hard to understand for even for us like it's very ambiguous, then it helps me to. Yeah, I have a for that. Also, I saw that you have created two bots, like one is for Hindi, one for English. And if you will include other regional languages, they will be separate or do will will the farmers have a choice of selecting the language? Yeah, so that is a little bit of a UX problem because if you if you basically want the output language to be something else, you have to include like menus inside the WhatsApp bot. And those menus can sometimes leave you in a state where you where you don't know what to do, and a farmer for sure does not know what to do. So that's why we said, okay, you can have the input languages whatever you want because you have this cost. So uh, it can interpret whatever language that you that you give it. Uh, and so we kept the input side open, but the output side we said, okay, let's keep that things. And for, and the idea is, if you're deploying it in India in a particular region, yeah, if the farmer really wants it in India, and they won't really understand American, which is a which is what we're trying to deploy in. Uh, in Ethiopia. So, uh, hey, um, I have one more question. So, sometimes uh, the same question can have different answers based on, say, time of the year or location, since health or farming is very context specific. And I, so, are you expecting the agents to give all that context, or do you have like a profile on each user which you feed beforehand before the question? Yeah, so we have uh, we basically because these uh, I mean they have been working in this space for ten years. They have the WhatsApp numbers of each of these farmers and the conversations they've had in the past with those uh, with basically the extension agents who were called. So we have that information and we are also annotating all of the data with uh, region specific uh, 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 with basically region specific labels of like uh, this uh, document is about this region in this time of the year. And then we can basically do a uh, while doing vector search, we can include that metadata and match against that. Hi, uh, one quick question. So, uh, the true power of generative uh, models like this is make it more conversational, right? So, you take the previous context into consideration where uh, giving the next response. But here, uh, in this such a system, the first, uh, I mean, retrieval is based on a vector search, right? So. When you when you do the vector search, there's no uh, context taken into consideration. There is. So if you look at the search query, it's actually uh, okay. It includes the first question, the second question, and the answer. So the vector search will be including all of the uh, conversation inside the vector search. Oh, okay. So you create like a, a vector out of the entire conversation history and then do a vector search. Yeah. So for an example, like someone asks uh, how to do pest control for crop X. And then you get results, and then you get the response from the generative AI. And then what about crop Y? So now you're actually not saying the entire sentence. Same problem as yeah, as well. right. I don't know how to solve it very well. So yeah, so here the vector search may not give the actual results here. Uh, but, but if he, if if it had given, then the generative model would have given a nice response. So there is something called query decomposition that okay. uh, Ravi might talk about. Uh, okay, sure. That we have an experiment with, with primarily because it's uh, it uh, increases latency because you have to do multiple right. GPT passes. Right. We haven't experimented with it because cool. we're not at, at the stage where we really have that problem. Right. Right. I think you can solve it with query decomposition and say because uh, you can do uh, interesting things like based on a timestamp. Was this question asked like a like a week ago? Then you say okay, that's not really that important. Right. You can do weighting of the query based on uh, a couple of these things like what is the question talking about. You can do multiple GPT passes and do some sort of intelligence there. Okay. Good. Non technical. Um, since it's a startup, I thought it would be better to ask right away. Who is the customer here? The extension guys or the farmers directly? As in who's paying, paying for it? Huh. Uh, 
the gates foundation. <laughs> Second question is not valid. I was asking ki how will you make money from it? Farmers will not pay. Yeah, farmers will never pay. You, you either make money from the government or the gates foundation or basically private fees. Then why can't just people search? I mean, why to use chatbot? Right? YouTube videos, there. why can't they just search it? Because I mean, anyways, I document, you guys have to comment. You look at the document here. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not that easy to search from it. And especially in, like, I think a, a very huge part of it is the translation as well. Like, it's very hard for a public to do this translation. And also, search for multiple videos, like, it's more about accessibility, really.